Narita Boy is an epic 80s style metroidvania all about old school digital around the human mind with stunning visuals and minor game design flaws. It shines with beautiful crafted backgrounds, perfect synthy music and great sword fight action animations. It lets you down with little explanation, backtracking and blurry controls. The story is complex but very intriguing and overall amazing for an indie title like Narita Boy. The creator, a genius of his time, creates a video game console called Narita One, with its flagship title being a game called Narita Boy. Narita Boy becomes a tremendous hit, copies of cartridges are flying off physical shelves worldwide. Within weeks, Narita Boy is the best-selling video game of all time, critically acclaimed for its power fantasy wielding the techno sword and taking players on a journey like no other. Meanwhile, inside the binary code, the digital realm connects with reality. Him has returned and deleted the greatest memories. Supervisor program Motherboard and her agents have activated the Narita Boy protocol. The stallions are coming and the digital kingdom needs a hero. You are taking control of this young pixel hero who gets beamed into this wonderful PC world. By emulating the look of a retro game and combining modern elements, Narita Boy is a game-in-game -game action platformer with a tremendous focus on fantastic synthy sounds, cryptic storyline, A to B puzzles and sword-wielding action elements. Narita Boy has definitely its flaws, especially when it comes to unprecise controls, cryptic narration and tutorials as well as to the overall complex game design with little help about the next steps to take. It lacks modern game elements like a map or way markers. Obviously the game decision also wanted to bring back some of those frustrating 80s moments. Dialogues throughout the game are interesting but rarely getting to the point about what is important. Thankfully you get a quick quest objectives menu which helps a lot to maneuver through the game. Besides of this, the first 20 minutes of the game were very frustrating and filled with unnecessary backtracking just because I missed some fundamental game elements, like for example going through doors, climbing up a cliff. The moment you find out, you feel a bit stupid, but having understood these basic game mechanics, let's call them shortcomings, the game starts to shine with its overall badass cool atmosphere, the fantastic theme and an artsy design rarely seen. The combat is swift with variations in combos. You can triple click to th slash through hordes of enemies or you can use a powerful beam to light up bugs of foes. The counterparts come in different physical variations with different grades of difficulties and tactics. Sometimes you need to dodge at the right moment, rinse and repeat and sometimes you feel cornered and it becomes slightly more frustrating. Whereby the combat system is overall well designed and yes fun, there seems to be however something off from times. I mean I click the button but nothing on the screen happens. I mean, I dodge and the character is running in the other direction. I was wondering if it was my controller, yes you better play it with a controller, or if it was the game itself. Here I still see room for patches in order to improve the combat system. But hell, yeah it is fun and the boss fights are challenging as well as it should be in a modern retro metroidvania. Later on you will learn to better combine shotgun attacks with beam attacks, dash and dodges just as it should be. And even more later on you can get different colored attacks which give the overall cool sword fighting mechanics even more depth and makes, makes you want to fight more than doing the puzzles or the platformer part of the game. In conclusion, combat is fun but needs one or another patch. The respawn system did not really appeal to me. Instead of respawning on the same screen where you died, the game will respawn you at the latest checkpoint. This checkpoint can be far away from the platform where you have died, which means you will need again to backtrack or revisit the location over and over again. The well-crafted backgrounds are nice to watch with their contrastful and colorful blinking neon lights on dark blue. 
but they wear off sometime after seeing them again and again. Only solution, get good and do not die. Learn the tactics of the combat and especially learn how to jump properly with the analog stick from one platform to another without falling down. But hey, this is more difficult than being said. The game shines spectacular when it comes to its Sinti's 80s music. You can get for $15 a great OST on Steam performed by Salvinsky and Kampa, composed by Salvador Fornieles, published under the label Auto Editarte Keizu Music. Feel fresh waves of sync wash over you while traveling the digital kingdom with 15 kicking beats that will send you back to the future. Wow! The game is around 9 hours playtime, steep learning curve and backtracking included but also offers some value for replayability in my humble opinion. With a price tag of 25 US dollars or euros you will get definitely enough game for your money. But as always it is totally okay to wait for a sale especially since Narita Boy will not, not grow old since it is an emulated retro game by itself so it will still be totally cool 10 years from now. By concluding Narita Boy is a fresh new retro experience in the best 80s home console artsy pixel style powered with one of the greatest soundtracks in indie gaming. However, it still has its game design flaws with unprecise controls, difficult puzzles, dislikable respawn functions and a narration that could be too complex for the average gamer. On the other hand, the game will find its fanbase for sure since the neon lights, the cool overall presentation, the love and sweat that went into it lets you forgive its shortcomings in platforming, puzzle and combat, whereby some parts might be frustrating new environments are rewarding and give you the desire to continue the adventure. Let me be clear, Narita Boy is a recommendation not only for fans but especially for retro lovers.